Back to Uncover the Human. We are here on part two of our special series with Lori Balcavoy, where we continue to go into a values exercise. Uh, and we would encourage you to listen to part one. We can play some of the clips of uh, the last portions where we talked about the the words we were coming down to that uh, are Lori's core values. We came up with the acronym SMAFA for it. Uh, so we talked about uh, how some of the core values revolve around self-mastery, authenticity, freedom, fun, and abundance. So that's why we came up with SMAFA. So Lori, thank you so much for doing that. Uh, one, we would love to kind of explore in part two here, how these values then translate into different parts of, our, of your life and, and how you'd like to see them show up. And maybe if you'd like to change approaches to it or encourage more of it or times where you already have it. So thank you so much. Uh, just to start us off. Thank you so much for joining again, Lori. You're welcome. Happy welcome to be back. here. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so looking at SMAFA, uh, the... <laughs> <laughs> I'm picturing Smurfs like actually That's coming funny. on the screen right now. <laughs> it does That's seem like funny. it should be. <laughs> where, where are the little blue people? <laughs> They're in my head. <laughs> well, how would you like to start, Christina? Would you, would you want to go like one by one? Should we like, consider different domains of life? How, how would you go about this? Uh, it's more up to Lori than me, but I guess, yeah, maybe uh, if you think of you know, either one by one or even combined, because sometimes more than one values shows up in, in important places of life. But uh, how have you found uh, that these are important values to you? I mean, we talked about the moments of flow, the energizing moments, and I have learned painfully, and I keep learning uh, painfully, uh, that some of my I guess, more core values, more important values in daily life or in certain situations of life that I am now is when they're being challenged. So mm -hmm. for example, freedom, uh, since it's part of, of SMAFA, it may be more obvious <laughs> uh, that it's an important value that needs to be lived by, understood, cherished, um, put kind of prioritized when it's missing. <laughs> mm -hmm. So do you I think that's a great point. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, no, no, go ahead. Sorry. Okay. I think that's a great point because a lot of times we can have values that are being challenged or that are even in, um, what's the right word, conflict with one another, mm -hmm. right? Like if, if being authentic is important to me and I'm getting direction at work that maybe I don't fully support and at the same time, I don't own the company, right? Or I'm not the CEO, so really my opinion probably doesn't matter to, to many. Um, it's like, how do I still show up in a way that feels good to me? And I do what I'm told. I do what's being asked of me, right? How do, how do I navigate that? And so I, it's funny because when you say, you know, that value is being challenged, one that came up that I did not identify is communication, being able to communicate clearly to share my thoughts and my feelings, to ask for the things that I want and need from different people in my life. And that gets challenged in me all the time, all the time, right? Because I've got in relationships that are important to me, uh, family relationships where maybe I can't be as direct as I want to be because I'm concerned for hurting people's feelings or being too abrupt, right? Or being unkind. You know, I'm not proud to admit it, but I think like everybody in moments when I am highly triggered, uh, I don't always show up the way I want to, right? And the minute I don't, like in the buildup, I know that I'm getting ready, right? To, to say something, to make a passive aggressive comment, right? To kind of send a zinger right across the table because somebody I care deeply about has, has you know, done that to me and I want them to feel a little bit what, that, what that's like. Uh, right? I'm not above that. It doesn't happen often, but it does happen. And so in moments when I find that I shut down or I withdraw from a conversation because I'm not being authentic, right? And I'm not leaning into the fact that that's uncomfortable and it's okay, I get challenged greatly. So that is something that I work on. <laughs> Thank you to my family for providing an opportunity, right? For me to work on that actively all the time because they trigger me like nobody's business. Let's just be honest, right? Thank you. 
pretty normal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's never because they made me say something mm-hmm. or not say something. It's because in those moments I was so caught up in my own experience right? That I, I, I stopped feeling grounded or I mm-hmm. felt psychologically unsafe for a second, right? Because of what someone said. And they know very well what my insecurities are. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes they, they poke it, they poke it directly. And I'm like, mm-hmm. uh, right. And then I feel like my whole system's shutting down and it's like, oh my God, do I punch them back or do I just run away? Because in those moments, it feels like those are my only options. And then I'm like, wait a minute, there's another. I could just stop for a second and breathe and say, hey, here's what I'm feeling. Yeah, it's funny funny because you remind me of uh, one of the best and most, um, how do I describe this? Kind of human, disappointing, realizing I'm not perfect moments from our coaching training when uh, Nina, I'm sure it was Nina, our lead trainer, trainer really explained the fact that when a bus- button is being pushed is because there's a button to begin with. <laughs> and that I remember getting this feeling of like, wait, I can no longer blame everybody else for when they trigger me. Yeah. This is a very sad moment. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think that's something that's universal, right? Like I hear a lot of times, I know I've said this and I certainly have clients every day that say this to me. Well, I wouldn't have to do that if this person didn't do that. It's like, really? Or was that your only option? <laughs> right. Or, or was there, was there another, was there a door number three that you could have gone down and chose not to? Right. Whether you were so caught up in the moment, you couldn't slow that train down. I think we've all been there. Right. When we feel something so intensely, we have this urge to react in a very specific way and we go for it. Now, oftentimes, at least I found this to be true. Those are the moments that I come back and have and apologize for yes. because it didn't feel great <laughs> and it did cause some damage. Right. And, and that's and I feel guilty. I feel embarrassed. And that's all about me. Mm -hmm. And I can either let that go and pretend it didn't happen, or I can step up and and honor my, you know, my values and the way I want to show up in the world and go, what I said was shitty. Mm -hmm. I know it hurt you. I knew the minute I said it, it would hurt you when I did that intentionally. And isn't it powerful to have that kind of vulnerability and courage to apologize? Mm-hmm. Instead of just kind of letting it go and hoping they forget and hopefully, you know, the relationship won't be lost. And most of the times it is if it's really triggering and it's really lots of buttons. And it's, yeah. uh, but it's curiosity, really, because once you, once you go through that process of like the, you know, the toddler five whys or six Y steps of like, oh, I get triggered. Why did I get triggered? Oh, there's a button. Why is there a button? Oh, because a value got challenged. What's that value? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I've, I've, I don't know that I have read that this is true, but this feels true to me. And maybe because we're saying it on a podcast, it's absolutely true. You guys will have completely one hundred percent, no doubt. <laughs> um, but I just lost my thought. What was I just going to tell you? Something that's one hundred percent true. <laughs> 100 really? true about the power of apology the power of uh coming back and admitting that mm-hmm. versus trying to ignore it and hoping the relationship stays oh yeah thank you here's what i was gonna the point i was going to make um i think that we can be more cruel to the people we are closest to because on some level we believe they will not leave us right it's like why i would say something maybe to my sister that i would never say to a colleague at work Or I say it to my sister in a tone or a very direct way because we have that history and that relationship and she knows where I'm coming from, right? I might edit that significantly if I'm talking to a total stranger. And so I do think that there is something there that, you know, we believe that I can act this way or I can say this thing and they will just forgive me because it's my family and that's what family does. And that doesn't feel great. 
right? It's like, why wouldn't I want to treat the people who mean the most to me? Why would I not want to treat them with the most care and the most love and the most compassion and the most under, right? Like, that's how I want to be. And so that is what I strive for. I fall short quite a bit, but, uh, but it's something that I'm actively working on. It's funny because if you consider both sides of the uh, coin and, and we even talked about it earlier, uh, your family gives you lots of opportunities to practice. And I think that's, that's pretty common. The, when you're, uh, when you're close to people, there's going to be more triggers and more availability of triggers. And there's also more both insistence that they should understand um, what trigger they're about to stand on. And from your, from your point of view as well, um, for what you just said, there's also the feeling of like, they might be a little bit more apt to pull that trigger, <laughs> a little bit more apt to push that button. Yeah. And so there's, there's ironically on both sides, more chance of uh, um, finding, finding the buttons and pushing the buttons. And uh, to have to put your much much more optimistic spin on it, there's uh, it's a great opportunity to practice that a lot more. Yeah, I think you're right, Alex. And I like I have a lot of conversations with clients about communication issues within a marriage or a significant relationship, and it's it's never about like when my husband leaves a wet towel on the floor, I want to stab him in the neck with a pen. Why does he do this every day? I've known him 20 years and he does it every day. And every day I want to stab him in the neck with a pen. Like, what is that about? It's not about the <laughs> towel, right? It, it really isn't. Sure, it's annoying. Like, you know, <laughs> can't I properly train you to like hang a wet towel up so it can actually dry? Um, but it's it's usually there's some other, like a bigger need, right? That we have that is not being met and we go for the low hanging fruit. I think we do that in relationships where there is a lot more familiarity and comfort and um, doesn't feel great. Does it like when you all do that, does it feel mm-hmm. great? Oh, isn't it funny how, as you talk about communication being the one um, kind of theme value of this breakdown that happens with families or dear ones or people that are close to us enough that they should know us, but they still push our button on purpose. Um, jokingly clearly. Uh, but how all I can think of is how your other values are now being challenged too. Mm-hmm. Cause now authenticity is challenged because you can't show up as your best self. Freedom is challenged because you can't have the freedom to feel at peace or not have the towel on the floor mm-hmm. uh, or avoid having a, an apologetic conversation. Um, abundance is challenged because now you're in scarcity of what's missing in my life. Why is this missing as opposed to oh, look at all the things I have. And so it just becomes this like meta monster of like, great, one, one value is down the drain and they all kind of follow in line. Mm-hmm. I think that's a great point, Christina. Too. It is it's master. Yes, so I'm not very masterful when I'm laying on the ground, nope. like in the fetal position going, what just happened, right? Uh, it's like, where's a blanket? I need some ice cream. Um, <laughs> Because the, our values really are there. They are interconnected, right? And at, at the time I wrote this, I, I don't know, Maggie Alderson, if you're listening, she helped me do this exercise. And she, she shared that it kind of sounded from what I, what I shared, it's kind of like a spider web, right? Is that it is really strong and it's fragile. And it's this interplay right between how all of our values, when we are in alignment with them, makes us incredibly strong, mm-hmm. right? And a force, and it is so fragile. And there, any little thing, right? Can, you, you can clip a connection and become complete, like completely unravel in the span of half a second. And, and you're right, Christina, when I am in those spaces, I'm not really honoring any of my values, mm-hmm. right? I'm just like a, you know, a two-year-old just, like having so many things happen at once that I, I can't even process anything and I just shut down. That's a very relatable experience. <laughs> I think that's the, the beauty of it is that it is a very human experience. We all know what that feels like, whether we want to admit it or not is another thing. But I've certainly <laughs> never met a human who hasn't experienced that. Yeah. So what are some tricks where you can catch yourself so that you don't let this whole spider web just unravel and you fall on the ground and, you know, with your legs up in the air, (laughs) 
<laughs> wailing away, <laughs> going like, help! <laughs> <laughs> Somebody end this! <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. And I, the first thing that comes to mind is to, first of all, take a second to ground yourself. Like, when we feel that urge to react in a very specific way, you know, our, our favorite amygdala that we've talked about is being activated and it's trying to help us and protect us. And that initial urge, like I've got to act right now. I've got to do something about it only lasts. I think it's about seven to nine seconds, (laughs) but in the moment, it feels like an eternity. Like if I don't address this right now, if I don't let the steam out of this right now, like I'll feel this way forever, right? We can get very um, catastrophic, the thoughts can very quickly, right? Yeah, Uh, unless that's just me. Is that just me? No. Um, And so taking a minute to literally just stop and go, what am I doing, right? And ground yourself, whether that's physically like stomping your feet, right? On the ground, whether it's just like shaking it out, like let the cortisol and adrenaline have a chance to get out of your system. Sometimes putting your hands up against the wall and like really just leaning into that for five, 10 seconds and then going, okay, now that I've kind of pushed pause on this runaway train, what do I actually want to do about what is what caused the trigger? Why did I just get so upset? It's not because of what the other person just said. It's because of how I'm interpreting what they meant by what they said, right? The assumption that I'm making. So I've got a few options. I can check for for clarity and go, hey, I'm thinking that this is what you meant. Or I'm thinking that you were passive aggressively trying to hurt me by saying that. Is that true? Right? And just checking in. How accurate is that? is my interpretation of what just happened. Part of it is being really honest with yourself so that you are aware, right? When you have hit below the belt, that that you're honest about that. You aren't going, no, I just, I was trying to perfectly communicate and I don't know what everybody else's problem is, right? Why they have a problem with that. It's like, no, I was was trying to, I was trying to zing them back. Like definitely that was part of it. I wanted them to know what that felt like just in case they forgot. I wanted to remind them. Um, And sometimes it can also be looking at one of the, one of your values, maybe your strongest core value, like in this moment, when I feel like it's all coming apart, right. And, and I could end up on the ground soon in a fit. What do I want to use to anchor myself? Is, is that being very just genuine and open and authentic right now? Is that exercising a little humility and saying, I don't love the way I'm acting right now. It doesn't feel great. I can't imagine it feels great to you either. Maybe it's thinking about, you know, how I want to treat the people that I love. Like I actually want my words and actions to be in alignment, that that matters to me. So those are a couple of the things that come up right away about how we can kind of pause before it all comes undone seem like incredible examples of self-mastery, especially. I mean, that's a great example of, of ways to find that and ways to be there. So I'm curious, um, for as far as your values go, as far as MAPA is, uh, if you have self-mastery, what's your idealized version of, of like, when, when you just, just, you know, maybe a scenario, maybe just how it feels, maybe there's a, a situation in which you feel like that is fully expressed. Let's go like value by value. What would self-mastery look like for you? If that's fully out there. So what does, let me just make sure I understand. So what does self-mastery look like in all the different areas, in all the different values that I have? Uh, What does it look like? Just, we can go through each value one at a time, but just for self-mastery itself, what what would that feel like if if you're feeling like, you know, a more full expression of that or Mm -hmm. where you you particularly get to feel that one value? That's a great question, Alex. I think it's it's when I know that I am self-mastery. It's I'm trying to describe what that feels like in my body, and the words are not coming up right now. Um, when I know that I'm one kind of working an edge, right? Something that that I like, I'm in this kind of growth space, or I'm 
outside of my comfort zone, right? It's, it's, am I, am I acknowledging that? Am I leaning into that? Am I saying it's, it's okay that things feel scary as hell right now? And I know how to do this, right? I'm, I've been in this place literally millions of times, probably in the court, well, millions might be an exaggeration, hundreds, thousands of times in my life, right? That place where things feel uncomfortable and it would be easy to just kind of fold in and give it up. And I, I think that the self-mastery comes in because it's like this innate, like, I know that I can do this. I know that if I can withstand the, the bit of discomfort that I'm feeling right now, I can do this. I can get to the other side. And that's because of, you know, all of the growth and the effort and the, you know, this commitment to being really honest with myself about what I do and who I am and being okay with that, right? I, I, I think all of that is encompassed in a self-mastery for me. I almost wish we hadn't started with that one. That one is a great encapsulation. <laughs> and I'm downhill love... from here. No. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing I love about it is that you, your expression of when like it's most there is you being uncomfortable and outside of your comfort zone. And that, I just think that's mm-hmm. a, a great point too, is that like values, like, yes, it, it leads to feeling a little bit more authentic, a little bit more like connected with what you're doing. But even there, you're showing that like, it's going to, it can show up in times when it feels uncomfortable and maybe that's, that's valuable as well as knowing the, that you want to be okay with discomfort. And that's a great, um, I just thought it was a wonderful dichotomy of like the, the comfort you find in having all of these aligned. And then your first example of the place you most want to see it is where you feel uncomfortable. And that's uh, I think it's wonderful. Yeah. Like I, I think in our own growth and development, we have like, we have to be willing to be uncomfortable. Otherwise, are we not by definition stagnant, kind of mm-hmm. standing still? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, mastery, I think, also comes up in the moments when I don't know if you guys experience this, but I literally do. And it kind of makes me worry just cognitively <laughs> about myself. But like you things flow just so naturally that sometimes it's like you black out and you just say what you say and then it's over. And you're like, wait, what did I just say? And people are like, oh, my God, that was beautiful. That made mm-hmm. so much sense. But I'm like, I don't even know what I just said. Yeah. Right. Like Will Ferrell in Old School. Mm-hmm. Did you guys remember that movie when he was up on the debate stage yeah. and he kind of blacked out and he's like, wait a minute, what just happened? Yeah. <laughs> um, so I feel like, too, there's also an element, you know, on the other end of that when you really are in flow and you are maybe operating right at your best and that that mastery, like you can rely on that because you built it and developed it. It reminds me of sports if you think about any or any type of physical activity where you do something in self-mastery so in like perfection mode uh and afterwards you know whether it's a tennis shot or anything else that you may be doing afterwards somebody asks you like oh my god how did you hit that ball that way and you're like no idea don't even remember doing it (laughs) yeah you you get in the zone yeah 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 i agree I agree. You're in the zone. It's a great way of putting it. And it is, I think, definitely gets to that point. And, and I, I think also it's worth pointing out that uh, I, I love what you said about like you, you look back and it is because of the growth. It is because of the development you've mm-hmm. done that you get to that mm-hmm. point. And that uh, reminds me of some of the stories you had when we were talking about discovering your values in part one. Uh, there was a point of pride that I think you, you really enjoyed it too, with uh, both uh, enjoying your nieces and nephews, as well as um, the people at Target. There's just pride in seeing this happen. And it's really cool to see that shine through in your explanations of this um, in part two here too. There's just pride in having done the self-development, the growth, the mastery, mm-hmm. the change. Yeah, like pride in the fact that you, you showed up and you did the hard work, right? At least this has not been my experience. Nobody's ever told me that life was gonna be easy. That, you know, there was like a rolled out in front of me everywhere I went and like, at least that's not my experience. And, you know, so knowing that like we have the ability to roll up our sleeves and get our hands dirty and figure things out and evolve as humans, like that's exciting. Like that lights me up. Are you kidding? Like we, we don't have to stay the same. If we are willing to lean into, again, this idea, this, this uncomfortable space, 
and be okay with that. Like, oh my God, who knows what you could discover about yourself? Like it's limitless. It doesn't have to be easy to be worth it. So. And that my dad used to tell me that all the time. If it was easy, it probably would. Like, or, you know, to yeah, be worth bored. it. Yeah. Like what's the fun in that? Yeah, exactly. And there were yeah. definitely times when I was like, God, I would, I would have preferred the easy route. And he's like, no, yes. you wouldn't worry. You in hindsight. Yeah. <laughs> so we've done self-mastery. And now it's hard to do all the other ones. No, uh, <laughs> thanks to that one. But uh, what about the other values? And especially when it comes to your daily showing up at your jobs or in your family and your social life. And also when you think, when you have those moments of where, where am I making decisions in my life now? Am I where I want to be? Am I actually honoring my values with my job, my career, my family, the way I show up with my friends? the way I talk to the grocery store register? Not always. Definitely not. Um, I'm not perfect, nor do I really, I don't even know what that would look like or if that's what I want. Right. I'd, I'd rather be just in more intentional with how I show up in the world and more impeccable. I'd rather focus on having more alignment between my words and my actions, right. To living in a way that feels good to me and, um, that means taking care of, right? The, the people I love, it means showing up in an open, genuine, authentic way for my clients. Um, I think there's also an element of curiosity, right? That we could add into the mix in terms of values and that you have to have a genuine desire to want to know people, <laughs> right? Otherwise, the, you're probably never really going to have people sharing things with you because they can sense for whatever reason that you aren't really open to that. And I think maybe we see a lot of that in the world, <laughs> right? Being reflected a lot right now. And so I know when I, I would say that now more than any point in my life, I am showing up to a higher degree in alignment with my values on a very regular basis. Uh, and I am fortunate because I have an opportunity daily when I'm working with people on values to think about where am I with my own values? Where is there a misalignment? And, and I, I use my list of values frequently because, you know, like you wake up some days and you just feel like things are off or you feel unsettled or a disturbance in the force. And you're like, what is that about? Right. I'll, I'll go to my list of values and I'll very quickly be able to identify oh, I wasn't being very authentic this weekend, was I? I was holding things back. I wasn't communicating. I wasn't sharing my thoughts with people. I was just stuck in this kind of weird energy. Of course, of course, that's what's off, right? And so then it's a matter of setting a couple like small action items to help move you forward. Like, okay, how do I increase my authenticity today? What would that look like in every area? You know, with my clients, with my friends, with my family, for myself, like, what does that look like? And then it's pretty easy to identify how you can move forward, right? So I, I think that I'm fortunate because I get an opportunity on a regular basis to ask myself, am I in alignment? That's Does a great way of phrasing it too, is also like, how are you, how are you, you know, finding ways to get back into it? You know, like your yeah. list of like action items. Mm -hmm. so I'm curious, let's start with the, uh, just a, a to, to be literal, a fun one. If you go to fun, the fun value, what would be is like, say so you're feeling, I don't know, in, in that there's a disturbance in the force mode, you're woken up in that way. Let's say what you're feeling is, is lack of fun. What's something that you might turn to um, that for you encourages that? How do you, how do you then decide, Hey, you know, this is something I'd like to encourage. And how to, what does it look like to create that? To create more fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, I, this is kind of easy for me because the kids, right? Like I have a six-year-old nephew. He's all about fun. Everything he does is fun. He's excited about everything. Everything's amazing. Right. Uh, and so literally I gravitate towards these children and I just absorb myself in their world and listen, have conversation with them. And, you know, the simplest things are fun, right? We could be raking leaves out of the yard and he'll say, isn't this so much fun that we're together? And I'm like, Yes, 
yes. <laughs> right? But it's like you forget because it's a chore or it's a task, right? Or we're viewing it from this kind of serious, it's an obligation or something we have to do. And it's like, is it something I get to do or something where we get to do together? Like, can there be an element of fun? What if we rake the leaves up and then we jump in the middle of them and make a big mess? Like, is that okay? Or if we have Nutella on our waffles and we get chocolate everywhere, how is that not fun? When it's going, how did I get Nutella all over myself again, right? Because it melts when it's on a nice hot waffle and that's kind of amazing, right? So there's lots of little things that I can do to check in and it's really just shifting my perspective. Do I want to be uptight and hard on myself and in this place of resistance and everything sucks and you know, there's no light in the world. And then I turn around and there's a six-year-old who's just beaming it, like beaming love and joy and acceptance and gratitude and possibility and opportunity. And it's like, okay, right. Lean into that. So I'm lucky because I have that and it's very accessible. I love that example because it does point out, because we all know that, you know, at some point uh, in every day and week and hour generally there's going to be a time where you know things are out of alignment or it will feel like it may be a, a couple of days on end where we feel a little bit out of alignment and or we we just have a job or something we have to do that we don't feel particularly aligned with but we can't yet leave we haven't set up the next job or you know there's mm -hmm. some reason we have to stay there a little bit longer it's a great reminder that it's worth finding those moments or whatever will fill some of those buckets for us you know maybe it's a, a six-year-old nephew you mentioned in the last episode i believe uh you talked about uh some clients here like you know i feel like i i really want to grow but i've been in this position for three years like well that doesn't mean there's not a way to grow that doesn't mean mm -hmm. there's not a way to have growth and it's just really interesting i love that point of just finding the mindset as well as the specific things in your life that might represent or just help access those pieces of values Mm -hmm. And I mean, I work a lot too with, you know, clients who have full-time jobs and they have significant others and they have children and they have household and laundry and groceries and all of that stuff that they have to do. And when they're like, I'm not having very much fun in my life. It's like, yeah, it sounds like, it sounds like it, right. There's so much to do and you want to do it. You like, you love your kids. You want your house, you want to be you know, fully function, a place that fully functions, like I get it. And you also don't have to have fun 14 hours every day. It's like, what would be one fun thing you could do this week? Maybe it's taking, like having your husband take the kids out for pizza and you take a bath and you just enjoy the silence. Or maybe they leave and you just sit on the couch for an hour and drink coffee and stare out the window because you're like, I can't believe how quiet it is right now <laughs> without all of this noise, mm -hmm. right? Maybe it's meeting, calling a friend and checking in with them and, and nurturing that relationship, right? Maybe it's going to play pickleball with a group of people you haven't seen in three months, like lots of things. And it, it, it just takes you being willing to ask. What is one thing I can do this week to have a little more fun? What does that look like? Yeah, those are great examples of how it just takes a little bit uh, and some of the same. In a way, it's similar to the statistics of people find being more productive and more engaged at work and how it only really takes doing the, something you love for 20% of the time. Mm -hmm of your work time. So, and they've done lots of research where if you go down to 19, your productivity and getting engagement and problem solving and all those beautiful things that we all need at work to be our best selves really drop drastically, but going up to even like 25 doesn't change all that much from 20. So again, like, you know, if you're looking at 20% of your work week, how hard is it to figure out from a leader's perspective, what do my people love to do? And can I make sure that they get at least 20% of that? Mm -hmm. Which goes back to what are my people's values? If I understand that somebody's value is freedom, flexibility, or communication, collaboration with others, then maybe I should make sure that they do spend time with others mm -hmm. at least 20% of the week. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great point. And, and also from the perspective of the employee who thinks mm -hmm. there's nothing about my job that I like. Well, yes. is that really true? Mm -hmm. You may be involved in a project that isn't lighting your world on fire, but 
perhaps you really love that collaboration and you're mm-hmm. getting a lot of mm-hmm. that, a lot, lot of opportunity to do that, right? Yes. Um, maybe since you're working from home right now, you don't have a three hour commute every day. And mm-hmm. that's something that you know you look forward to or that you enjoy. Like it doesn't have to, I think sometimes we we look at it through this like all or nothing yeah. perspective, right? If I can't have mm-hmm. all of it, then I want none of it because it's just too much of an effort and who cares and it's not worth it, right? <laughs> we get stuck in that energy for a while. We definitely do. So if we dig into some of the other values then too, you, you've talked about freedom, uh, type of freedom, authenticity, and I think we, abundance are all ones we, we can cover. What are places maybe outside of work, inside of work, where either you feel like that's challenged or maybe you, uh, I mean, it sounds like you've done so much work on this. You've kind of gotten to develop this to the point where you get to be in alignment and that's really cool. So maybe it's about some of the journey from before uh, you felt more authenticity or before you felt more freedom. Yeah, that's, that was a big, that's a big journey. Um, (laughs) and I think honestly, part of it, you know, was my desire to really, really just get to know myself. Like, why am I doing some of the things I'm doing? How and why am I getting in my own damn way? Right? Where do these insecurities come from? Really? Right? Where is this thing about not being enough? why am I buying that? Like when someone came around selling it, why did I go? Yeah, I'll, t- I'll, I'll, I'll double up on that. Like give me some of that, right? <laughs> Here's like, my bank account number yeah. and credit cards. <laughs> yeah. Like why did I double down on that? And, and why did I let that drive me and drive my behavior for so long? I mean, decades of my life that was driving everything I did subconsciously, right? I didn't have the vocabulary and I didn't know myself well enough. Um, I hadn't done the discovery, right? The hard work, the rolling up my sleeves to, to kind of uncover everything and go, what is this about? And what do I want to create? Like, what kind of life do I really want for myself? How do I want to be in the world? How do I want to show up for people that I love? Is it important for me or to me that my words align with my actions? Do I want to get involved with raising, helping raise my nieces and nephews? Or do I just want to see them one day a year and go, yep, that was fun. Go home, right? Like, I mean, we all have these, these choices where we get to discover and uncover things about ourselves. And I think there became a point in my life where I fully jumped into that. It was like, I have no idea where this is going to go, but I know what it was like before I, before I did this. And that wasn't serving me. That wasn't creating the life that I want. So what could be possible if I just fully showed up as Lori and everything that that means and realized that some people will dig that and some people won't, and that's okay. But I don't have to limit myself, right? By the fear that it won't be okay with everybody else, is it okay with me? And so I had to just be very honest. I had to cut the bullshit. And I just had to say, what is it you want, girl? And are you gonna show up and get it? Are you gonna show up in a way that you can get it? What was the turning point? (sighs) My dad's death. And I mean, life changed so quickly that I thought, what am I doing? Like, it was this big, like, you know, kind of light bulb thing. And it's like, what in the hell are you doing? Right? You're the only person, you are the only person who's responsible for what your life is. You don't, you don't get to blame that on other people or circumstances or missed, you know, opportunities that didn't come your way and how things weren't fair. Like, and that, that really, I think, was, was the impetus because it was like, oh, my God, now what, right? And so it led to a lot of therapy, right? Because I really wanted to know, like, why am I blocking myself? What is that about? And how do I move forward and really advocate for myself, right? And demand more 
for my own life. And what would that feel like if I had the courage to do that? So that's what led to it. A major disruption in my life. One thing that you've mentioned a few times, Christina, is the uh, that that change happens when you get to that disturbance. Yeah. You get mm-hmm. to that disruption. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, when something happens that you become so unc- like there is so much discomfort. Yeah. Right. That that I think you you can either numb yourself from it mm-hmm. and you can avoid it and you can try to outrun it, or it is such an abrupt thing that it literally hits you in the face and you're like, yeah. whoa, this is one of those kind of crossroad moments, Mm -hmm. right? I've got clear choice, which one do I want to make? I think it was you, Lori, that taught me the term, the life shock moment. Yeah, the life shock, that's exactly what it is, right? And, And our life shocks, they come to us continually and they keep getting louder. Till something yeah. happens yeah. that smacks us in the forehead. And it's like, yeah. hello, I'm here. Are you ready to look at this? Right. Mm. And sometimes the answer is no. And we're like, nobody's home, right? When it's yeah. not going to, and it, <laughs> yeah. it will come back. Oh, it yes. will come back. Yeah. 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 Oprah talks about it as the universe whispers to you all the time. You can listen to the whisper, or you can wait until the wall comes down and knocks you the, over the head. Mm-hmm. but it's going to keep coming until you learn it and you yeah. start listening. I've certainly experienced that to be true in my life. Yeah. I think uh, somebody told, I think it was both of us, Christina, I think somebody told us, but uh, I just heard it recently. It was um, you can either make time to be healthy or you will lose time being sick. Yes. You can either mm-hmm. work on this or it will come eventually. I think the, yeah. the time's coming one way or another. I think that's a great point, Alex. And I, I mean, I, I don't know if this is true, but it feels true to me is that the things that we have that are unresolved, right, mm-hmm. for us mentally and emotionally, I think those manifest physically in our body. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't like the way that that feels, right? It's just like internally kind of covered with sludge and it doesn't feel great. Mm-hmm. Right? And so it's uncovering all of that. I think, and, and doing kind of just the hard work, like that just keeps coming up because it's definitely not easy, right? And there's no lots of opportunities along the way to, you know, throw the covers back over your head mm-hmm. and, you know, sleep for another three years. And it's like, is that really what I want? Mm-hmm. It's a really good way of putting it because uh, that is exactly the feeling. And it's also worth noting. I um, mean, you, 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 you come across uh, today, especially and getting to talk to you about all these things, you, you are, you're very articulate about having gotten to these values and you've done the hard work and it's very fun to see this side and see, you know, and I'm not going to say post work, there's always work that's going on, but there's a, uh, you've done so much um, that it's really fun to engage on this portion of it. And I think it's very much worth people seeing and hearing what this uh, is like on the other side. And it's a really good reminder that that, that it's great to get there. And it, it doesn't mean it's easy to get there. Mm-hmm. It's wonderful to be a little bit more in alignment, but it's going to be a lot of difficult looking at things that feel incredibly uncomfortable after a lifetime of our brain training us to look away from uncomfortable things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's definitely not easy and it's totally worth it. Yes, it is totally worth it. Right? That is the greatest byline I've ever heard. That's exactly it. Yes. It's that x ray and colonoscopy combination that <laughs> Alex and I have been talking about recently. Yeah. We had a friend of ours uh, do a similar exercise for us. And uh, we, we, I was like, I told Christina, I felt like uh, my insides were seen. And she said it was like uh, getting an x ray and a colonoscopy at the same time. <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot. Well, like it. <laughs> yeah, it does feel like it. And, you know, I think it's, I, I think, again, I, I can't prove this, but it, I think that we are flawed by design, mm-hmm. right? So that we have an opportunity if we want it to develop and to grow and to evolve. And that's on us, right? That isn't on anybody else. Like we can just stay the same and that's okay. Some people do, and they live perfectly happy lives. 
But if you have the sneaking feeling that there is something more, mm -hmm. right? That if, if you can dig in and do the work and get real with yourself, who knows what you can create, right? Yeah. Maybe it is the life of your dreams. Maybe it is the love of your life. Who knows? The magical or values been... alignment. <laughs> yeah, feels good. Just... Reflecting that, Laura, you, you, you were truly the, the perfect person to have on for this. You articulate this journey so well, um, and you've you've gone through so much of the work, and you do an, an amazing job of talking about why these things are important, not only for you, but you've connected that very well for how this applies to um, everyone, how, why, the, why this is important, what you can get from this. And the one thing that I really love about your journey specifically is you went, you found these values, you turned and you did all the work to get yourself to them. And the thing you find such joy in, and maybe this happens with a lot of people when they find some true values, is you love uncovering this with other people. You love getting people to that freedom, stopping the limiting beliefs, working in coaching in every story you had up to this point. You, you take these values and you love transferring as much as possible and seeing that happen for other people. And that's just truly, really fun to see and to witness. And it's, it's really just amazing. Thank you. It, I love it. I love it. There's nothing I've ever experienced in my life quite like it. And that's why I know that this is helping people transform and Ooh, you guys are getting me. Holy cow. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> but having an opportunity to witness courage in action by total strangers. Courage in action. I love that expression. You know, and, and their willingness to be completely open and vulnerable. Yeah. Even though it's scary as hell. Right? And to see them go, you know what? I... I have changed and grown in ways that I never imagined mm -hmm. I would. I mean, come on, it doesn't get better than that. Yeah. It really doesn't. So I am. not be strangers, but it's amazing to see your courage in action currently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes it won't feel like courage, right? It'll feel messy and it'll feel scary. It's like, I, I, a, a very important person in my life, somebody I consider like one of my dad was my first teacher and Richard is my second. And every time I would get up to speak at this thing, my legs would just shake. And I don't mean shake a little, like to the point where I felt like I was going to literally fall over. Like my fight and flight center was so engaged that it's like everything in me is like, just run away. But something was like, no, stay right. Stand here. And I had always looked at that as um, a weakness. And he's like, what are you talking about? The, the fact that everything in you is screaming to run mm -hmm. and instead you are standing there tall, like that speaks of character, that speaks of integrity, that speaks of courage, that speaks of bravery. And I was like, holy shit, yes. Like, that's what it feels yeah. like, right? To really be vulnerable. It is scary and it is unsettling and it is disturbing and it's worth it. If you can force yourself to just stay in that moment, it is worth it when you get to the other side. That's Beautiful. all I know. That's awesome. Well, we could go on for hours as usual. Uh, but thank you for being authentic, abundant with your stories and your emotions and your vulnerability, showing self-mastery of understanding values and doing the work. I'm missing some of your mess, SMAFA. My, my What's SMAFA. the rest of SMAFA? <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to get all the, the values. To, and, I got... <laughs> to do it. and also, this has freedom. just been a fun conversation. It's yes. been incredibly fun, fun to do and this. freedom. Yeah. Yes, thank you guys. Thank you for deciding to start a pad podcast where you show up and just create this beautiful space for people to just be themselves. It's an incredible thing that you all are doing. And I feel very, very, very lucky and grateful that, that you're in my life and, I, I, and that you're doing this. So thank you.
both very much. Thank you. Thank We're you. grateful to have you. You're very welcome. And thank you everybody for listening. Thank you.